pure political gangsterism from those running a party that is collapsing into a brutish authoritarian cult. That at least is how Trevor Phillips, the former chair of the Equality and Human Rights Commission, has reacted to receiving a letter informing him that he's been suspended from the Labour Party pending the investigation of allegations of Islamophobia. So as you just heard there, Trevor Phillips, former head of the Equality and Human Rights Commission, you know the people that investigated Labour for anti-Semitism, has been suspended from the Labour Party for so-called Islamophobia which I'm sure you will agree is hilarious once you find out the reason. Because he has simply just been stating facts over the years. None of this relates to anything he has said recently. Now we have a couple of clips of him speaking on BBC Radio 4's Today programme, as you just see a short clip of there, along with a few news articles going over his suspension from the Labour Party. So we'll take a quick look at the BBC's one on that, before we hear the rest of the BBC Radio 4 interview, which I have to tell you features one hostile host against Trevor Phillips, trying his hardest to claim that Muslims are a race, when we all know they are not. It's a religion. Now, I will say a part of the reason why he has been suspended is because he opposed the grooming gangs being called Asian grooming gangs rather than Muslim grooming gangs, which is technically what they should be called. Now, you can see some of the previous articles written by Trevor Phillips, which it would seem has got him in this hot water with the Labour Party. But in all honesty, being kicked out of the Labour Party is probably not a bad thing, because like Trevor Phillips said, they are a brutish authoritarian cult in this day and age. But the BBC's article on it headlines, Trevor Phillips suspended from Labour Party over Islamophobia allegation. The former UK equality watchdog chief, Trevor Phillips, has been suspended from the Labour Party over allegations of Islamophobia. The Times newspaper reported the anti-racism campaigner is being investigated over past comments dating back years, as I said a moment ago. Mr Phillips, ex-chairman of the Equality and Human Rights Commission, said Labour were in danger of collapsing into a brutish authoritarian cult. You know, the momentum one I would expect he is talking about, led by, of course, the Corbinated Chicken and his merry band of losers. A spokeswoman added, the complaints are fully investigated in line with our rules and procedures and any appropriate disciplinary action is taken. Well, they must be new ones, because I'm pretty sure you lot were in hot water for leaving a bunch of anti-Semites in your party. Funny how it's different when it comes to someone accused of so-called Islamophobia. Which in itself is inherently stupid anyway, since I'm pretty sure Trevor Phillips doesn't have an irrational fear of Islam, which is what a phobia is. Mr Phillips was among 24 public figures who wrote to The Guardian last year, declaring their refusal to vote for Labour, because of its association with anti-Semitism. He could be expelled from the party for alleged prejudice against Muslims. Which is really hilarious if you ask me, half of the Labour Party should be expelled for prejudice against white British people. But you don't see that happening, do you? Mr Phillips has been suspended pending investigations over remarks including expressing concerns about Pakistani Muslim men sexually abusing children in northern British towns, according to the Times, which is what we've got the petition up for, guys, currently at around 84,000 signatures, so just 16,000 to go to hit the 100k. Make sure to share it around, the link will be in the video description and as a pinned comment. It says the complaint also covers his comments about the failure of some Muslims to wear poppies for Remembrance Sunday and the sympathy shown by some in an opinion poll towards the motives of the Charlie Hebdo attackers. Oh, so he's got a problem with terrorists and the Labour Party are kicking him out. I wonder if that's anything to do with the Corbinated Chicken calling terrorist organisations friends. The paper said many of his statements are years old, but that Labour's General Secretary Jenny Formbury suspended him as a matter of urgency to protect the party's reputation. Oh, get real. How can you protect the reputation of the Labour Party that is right in the shit with anti-Semitism and other bullying claims, along with, of course, the worst defeat in 85 years? 
Speaking to BBC Radio 4's Today programme, Mr Phillips stood by his previous assertion that Muslims were different, and that is something they would say. Also, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, let's not bother reading the rest of that. Let's see what Trevor Phillips had to say when he was dealing with an extremely biased BBC host. Well, I'm kind of surprised that uh, what is and always has been an open and democratic party decides that its members cannot have a healthy debate about how we address uh, differences of values and uh, outlooks. And let's be clear about this. Um, They say that uh, I'm accusing Muslims of being different. Well, actually, that's true. The point is Muslims are different. And uh, in many ways, I think that's admirable. Well, no, we already know that you can't have a healthy debate about anything if you're a part of the Labour Party. Remember what two of the leaders have signed up in relation to transgender rights or taking rights away from women, whichever way you want to look at it. So this really does not surprise me, and I'm sure it doesn't surprise many of you. And you heard Trevor Phillips say that the Labour Party have got their knickers in a twist because he said Muslims are different, which I'm pretty sure Muslims themselves would agree with. You know, you can check what Islam thinks about every other religion or those who don't follow any religion. It's not exactly hidden, is it? But in this day and age, pointing out the facts of life will get you booted out of the Labour Party. Or, by what's happening here, you could call it the British Islamic Party, because it's no longer the Labour Party, if you ask me. But you know, I mean, you of all people know, it is sweeping generalisations which are the problem, and they are often the problem with racism. To declare Muslims are different, about three million people in this country, when you're talking about one cricket club in one town, is tricky. And there's other language that you've used in the past. When you made a famous Channel 4 documentary about what Muslims really think, you used the phrase, Britain's Muslims are becoming a nation within a nation. And he's probably 100% right. It's not just the UK, though. It's Muslims in every other European country that are essentially becoming a nation within a nation. So Trevor Phillips is right in saying that. Many Muslims would likely agree and openly admit that is what they want. Do you not, at the very least, just need to be more careful about what you say and how it can be used by others? Well, first of all, the so-called sweeping generalisation was made in a uh, 20,000-word pamphlet which went into some detail about what I meant by different. But there are all sorts of differences in our society. And the central point of my pamphlet was to say we cannot continue simply to say that differences won't matter on and in my view, it's a, it's a form of disrespect somehow to say to people, oh, don't worry, the differences of values that they have, the beliefs that such and this group or that group have, including, by the way, the one that I come from myself, um, that, oh, they'll get over it. That's disrespectful. We have to address them. Now, sure, on the but point, does it, does it make you flinch at about, all, the Tommy Robinson on your point, comparison? To be honest, I had never heard that before. Yeah. I, d- I did not know he had ever used that phrase. But as my grandmother says just because the devil picks up a tune doesn't mean it's a bad tune right now you heard the bbc shit weasel host there try to construe tommy robinson with what this guy had said so remember guys if tommy robinson or any other so-called reprobate in the world says something you're not allowed to say it because then you're instantly put in bed with that person which I'm sure puts everyone out of the ability to even speak English because the carbonated chicken has used all of those phrases likely in his life while he stands there shoulder to shoulder with every Islamic terror organisation you could imagine or nearly all of them, who knows how many he actually supports. We definitely have some evidence that he at least supports a few. So realistically, Trevor Phillips being kicked out of the Labour Party for so-called Islamophobia really isn't a shock to me, and nor should it be to anyone else. Like I said, they could easily be considered in this day and age the Islamic Party of Britain. Give it time, they might even change their name. But there are lots of uh, tunes for devils to pick up coming from the mouth of Trevor Phillips. I mean, after that documentary as well, The Times, a paper for which you're a columnist, and the quotes I gave today from your column in The Times, Muslims are not like us. 
race equality chief says. Now, you don't write the headlines. I understand you don't write the headlines. But you have quite an influence, if you want to, on a paper like The Times for which you write. It is the generalisations that lead people to say, isn't that what racism is? It's judging people not by their views, not by who they are, but by the fact they belong to a group. No, you snivelling shit weasel. You can tell how disingenuous this clown is just by what he said there. He knows full well that race is about the race and nothing more. He is just trying to mix it in with their views to go along with what the Labour Party's definition of Islamophobia is. On the question of the definition of Islamophobia, my objection to this is very simple. That definition says uh, words to the effect that uh, Islamophobia is a kind of racism or rooted in kind of racism, uh, uh, expressions of hostility towards Muslimness. I have two problems with this. Just to explain the background so that people know, this is not yet an internationally accepted definition in the way the one on anti-Semitism was. It's not been accepted by the government, but it has been adopted by by the Labour Party, Liberal Democrats as well as it happens, and it was drawn up by an all-party group of MPs. Correct. My objections to it, which were published in a pamphlet uh, by the think tank policy exchange last year are twofold. First of all, um, Muslims are not a race. I mean, my my personal hero is Muhammad Ali, before that Malcolm X. They joined, they became Muslims largely because it's a pan-racial faith. This is not a racial grouping. So describing hostility to them as racial is nonsense. And the second point I wanted, I made was that this idea of Muslimness, completely undefined, nobody knows what it means. And my, my point was, ironically, that what would happen is people who you couldn't imagine in any way being hostile would be swept up in some kind of persecution. Now, it's clear. Here we are. I don't know that I need to add anything more to that first bit there. Muslims are not a race. That is the end of it. He even goes into detail proving the point that Muslims are not a race in the sense of Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali many years ago becoming Muslim. Because otherwise you have to consider Catholics or other religions a race also. And I can guarantee they won't do that. I mean, you can shit talk Catholics, can't you? But apparently you can't shit talk Islam. Especially not if you're the BBC, Lib Dems or Labour like you heard in that. Because they have adopted this definition when nobody else has. I wonder who pushed them into doing that. And the idea of Muslimness or the word of it is just nonsense. Sounds to me like something rich white kids would say in a university campus. Can't say I've ever heard a Muslim say Muslimness. Clearly true that some people can choose, as it were, to become Muslim. White people uh, can choose to be Muslim. People of all racial backgrounds and all origins can do that. However, many people are born to be Muslims. You know they are. They could leave. Of course they could. People could renounce their faith. But they're essentially born. And the key to fighting racism is surely to say, we don't condemn you. We don't generalise about you because of the way you were born, the colour of your skin in your case, uh, perhaps my racial background in my case, being Muslim in someone else's case. You just don't do it. And you are doing it, is the charge. No, that was exactly my... That's exactly the point I just made, Nick. Muslims are a multiracial grouping. In this country, actually, uh, I think a majority are South Asian extraction, but actually there are large numbers of African Muslims. Uh, I myself, by the way, uh, have a thousand years of Islam Muslims in my history, yeah, interrupted by transatlantic Muslim. slavery. You wouldn't, you wouldn't call yourself Muslim. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. But my point. But the point is that we are not talking about a racial group. We are talking about a group of people who are united by a faith and a belief. Okay, once again, being born to be Muslim still doesn't make it racist, you fucking idiot. Come on, man. This BBC host is really clutching at some straws here. There is no way in the world, whether you're born into the Muslim faith or nothing, that could make it a racial issue. It's a fucking religious issue. It's got fuck all to do with race. As Trevor Phillips said, it's a pan-racial faith. End of story. Now, I don't know about you guys there, but that BBC host definitely seemed very hostile towards Trevor Phillips during that interview almost like he was a stooge of the Labour Party. 
But I have to say, Trevor Phillips was spot on in everything that he said. And obviously, none of it is Islamophobic. The word shouldn't even exist, because of course, you cannot have an irrational fear of the Islamic faith. You could have a rational, perfectly understandable fear of jihadis and things like that, but I'm sorry, there is no way you can have an irrational fear of a religion. It's a made-up word, I don't care what you say. But I do find it rather ironic that a guy from the Equality and Human Rights Commission has been suspended from the Labour Party, considering they were investigated by it for anti-Semitism. Could they have a bit of prejudice against him because of that? Who knows? This whole thing seems like a load of old bullshit to me though. But on that note guys, I am going to end the video there. Now before I go, I've started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you would like to come and join me for a live stream to chat in real time, have an interest in gaming related content on YouTube, or just want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description below and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot and I'll see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies Mr. Verhofstadt against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.